The Olympics are the most famous sporting celebration worldwide. And at some points, countries fought to host them. At first, you might think that hosting the Olympics is something no country should miss. People will travel and visit their country, the tourist revenue will increase, and they will gain the prestige of being the host of something really big. Well, right now, countries don't want to be hosting this event, and there are some pretty good reasons behind this. In 2004, 12 countries applied to host the Olympics, and Greece won that run. They hosted the Olympics, and the competition went on. Then, 10 countries applied in 2008, and Beijing won. The same happened time and time again. Do you see the pattern? Fewer and fewer countries entered the hosting competition, which led us to 2024, where only two countries were left for the Olympics hosting votes. Something that never happened before happened this year, and Paris was chosen. And at the same time, they announced that Los Angeles would be hosting by 2028. Why is that weird, you might ask? Because the International Olympic Committee, until now, has never picked two places at once and announced ahead of time where the next Olympics would be celebrated. The IOC, as they're called, was very concerned that nobody would be willing to host the Olympic Games due to very little participation in recent years. The committee made a few more announcements regarding the Olympics and called it a day, but the fear is still lingering. Every time, the numbers dwindle, and what's worse, the citizens don't want their countries hosting because it means expending billions of dollars. What does this mean exactly? Well, hosting anything related to sports is very expensive, and right now the world economy can't afford big expenses. People see this and constantly protest regarding how governments handle these kinds of events, which circles us back to the lack of participation in the hosting selection. But before we talk about what's happening now, we need to go back in time for a bit, because this has happened before. The Olympics faced this problem when they came up with the idea of rotating the games around the world in 1896. If you paused right here for a second to think that 1896 was a long time ago, you're right, it was. This is important because by that time, jets weren't invented, communications and traveling were far more difficult, and moving so many people was impossible. This was a problem, but money could solve it, right? Well, just like many, many other problems, yeah, it could. But the amount of money that any country would need to invest for this to happen was astronomical. Several zeros would need to be added to any amount, even at that time. Keep this in mind, because that's kind of important. The IOC wanted to rotate the games and spread them out internationally so everyone in the whole world can enjoy them. Countries wanted to host, the competition grew, and the IOC submitted bids to vote for the winner. By 1984, a century later, nobody wanted to be hosting the Olympics. The increased global accessibility meant it didn't matter as much where the Olympics took place and that the people would be able to enjoy them all the same. Tons of problems brewed, and they reached a peak by this time. The last few cities that hosted the Olympics had a hard time while doing so thanks to this. Local political protests were violent in 1968 in Mexico City. In 1972, a huge terrorist attack in Munich killed 11 Israeli athletes, and the German government went wild. The world was seething and realized that hosting the Olympics could be a political risk. If you add to this the possible corruption problem and the huge construction challenge, this gets even worse. In 1976's Montreal Olympics, the country spent more than 13 times the budget they had, and they gained almost nothing in comparison. The political, economic, and social risk was far too big. So now enters the hero of this story, and it's Los Angeles. They saved the games by the time the IOC faced this same hosting problem for the first time. In 1984, nobody wanted to host the Olympics, so Los Angeles offered a deal to the committee. They didn't want to spend any risky money, so they would host the Olympics using existing revenues. Athletes slept in college dorms, and many showed their abilities in old stadiums, but it did the trick. The 84 Olympics were a success in every way, and LA made a lot of profit by that time with little to no expenses. The main problem behind hosting the Olympics wasn't the political risk or the social inconvenience the games caused. No, just like a lot of other problems, like we said before, money was at the root of the issue. And Los Angeles dealt with it masterfully. 
Many countries expended millions of dollars and thought that they needed to spend even more to meet the IOC's demands. LA showed that this wasn't the case. Countries could host the Olympics without having to lose millions on infrastructure that wouldn't be used later. This realization could have formed the new model for the Olympics after the huge LA success. But instead, the IOC decided to double down on problems. After the LA save in 84, the IOC decided that instead of sticking to the LA model, they would demand more because they were the Olympic Committee. Between 1992 and 2020, the IOC added more sports to the game. This meant that any hosting country needed to spend more money on venues and housing. Hosting cities were responsible for all of those expenses and needed to pay for everything. This on its own wasn't that bad, but the hosting competition intensified and they needed to make their cities more attractive. For example, in 2000, Sydney built 15 new venues and hosted 10,000 athletes. Athens wanted to host later, so they built 22 new venues. Later, Beijing built 12 new places, but very expensive ones, and so on and so on. The cost increased more and more by the minute. In other words, the cost of being the Olympics host skyrocketed, creating a new minimum of $25 billion. And that number doesn't include extra expenses like transportation. Russia spent $51 billion in 2014, and Japan spent $28 billion, blowing up their initial budget through the roof. Now, cities make revenue, of course, but it only covers a fraction of the cost. Overall, hosting the Olympics is a bad economic deal, and the IOC is the reason behind this. Before, hosting the Olympics used to pay off, and cities lost money only for a short time. Even the IOC has a list of benefits on their website that you could check out. If you do so, you will find the word legacy a lot. According to the IOC, legacy means that the things that the city built and all those expenses will benefit the hosting cities long after the Olympics. But this is kind of far from the truth. Beijing spent $33 million on their stadium, thinking that pro soccer teams would justify the extra seats at some point after the Olympics. But this never happened. Another legacy benefit, according to the IOC, is that the Olympics will put your city on the map. But let's be real. Most cities that host the Olympics are already well-known places for everyone. So long story short, the real legacies are tons of stadiums and sports infrastructure that aren't used and are expensive to maintain. Last year, after 2020 and after the IOC faced its reality, they started to negotiate with the cities to privately avoid any possible controversy or regrets. The IOC knows that hosting the Olympics and other sporting events is expensive, and the countries don't want to bid. They hope that after the results of Paris 2024, other countries' points of view might change, and they would start to bid under new conditions where they don't spend as much money on new stadiums, and they can use what's already built. Hopefully, the LA model will be used again in 2028 and become the new norm. But what do you think? Did you tune in to the Paris 2024 Olympics? And are you going to in 2028? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe.